Here we have a large patch, here we are uh, along the schoolhouse road, and a large patch of thimbleberry, uh, just kind of at the tail end of its bloom. But it has these large white flowers with five petals. It's in the uh, rose family, uh, and it's in the same genus as raspberries and blackberries, but much larger flowers than raspberries. But a typical rose family flower, five petals, uh, Senecious, same house, uh, both it, it which means it has both male and female flower parts in the same flower. Per, they're called perfect flowers. Uh, grows usually about two, three feet tall, and it has these maple-like leaves. A lot of people would walk past this and say, well, that's a maple seedling, but it is not even closely related. They're alternate on the, on the stem rather than um, opposite like maples. Uh, grows in large patches, uh, usually in open woods or on the edges of woods. The flower will develop, and you can see over here a little bit of it happening already. It starts to develop uh, its fruit, and that will become a large raspberry-like fruit later in the summer. Uh, tasty, really soft, uh, uh, doesn't hold together like a raspberry or blackberry, just kind of turns to mush in your pail that you're picking but uh, very tasty, uh, used to make jams and jellies and wines, uh, things like that, but uh, really nice when it's in bloom like this, uh, thimbleberry. This is maple leaf viburnum, one of my favorite shrubs. Oh, it's a classic understory shrub. You don't see it usually out in the full sun. It's kind of under the canopy of taller trees. It's one of several native viburnums in Door County. It's called maple leaf viburnum because it has, like we just saw with uh, thimbleberry, these maple-like leaves. And they're opposite on viburnum, so it's even more confusing with a maple. But once it's in bloom, you can see that it's not a maple um, at all. It's something different, uh, in this case, a viburnum. Clusters of these you know, kind of loose clusters of small white flowers, uh, very showy and attractive. Uh, they'll turn into uh, about pea size or the size of a small pea. Clusters of bluish black berries later in the season that birds love. So great, great for wildlife. And the foliage turns a beautiful pink color in the fall. So, uh, Stays fairly low. This is a this is about as tall as you see them right here. This is about six feet tall. This patch right here, typically a little low, uh, shorter than that, uh, makes, in my opinion, a great landscape plant too. Hard to find in the trade, but a really nice uh, shrub for semi-shaded areas. Maple leaf viburnum. Here's a nice patch of uh, Canada Wild Ginger, another, another one of my favorites. These large, velvety, heart-shaped leaves. Uh, and it's called Wild Ginger because it was used by uh, early settlers as a ginger substitute. They would dig up the roots, dry them, and grind them up and use it like ginger. But it's not even related to the true ginger. But the real treat is down below, right at the base, laying on the ground, are the flowers, these odd-shaped, flowers that lay right in the ground, kind of reddish brown in color, and uh, ground, uh, various ground uh, living insects, ants in particular, will crawl in and uh, fertilize uh, the flowers. So they're, most people never see them. They're right on the ground underneath all the foliage, but uh, really makes a really nice ground cover. Uh, uh, another nice landscape plant. But, uh, here it is in fairly deep shade near the Clearing Lodge, Canada Wild Ginger. This is yellow hawkweed out here in the Homestead Meadow at the Clearing. Uh, a lot of it in bloom right now. You can see it's in the Aster family similar to astroflowers and dandelion and things like that. Uh, 
There's an orange species too, very similar in every other respect except for the flower color. But uh, we have the yellow uh, at the clearing mostly. Uh, it's called hawkweed. Legend has it that uh, hawks uh, eat the flowers of hawkweed in order to improve their vision. I have never seen that, but it's a nice story. Uh, it's also called devil's paintbrush. Not sure why. Uh, it's a weed. It's a non-native uh, plant. Some people will consider it invasive. I put it in the same category as dandelion. Very common. Uh, weedy in gardens, in landscapes. Easy to pull. Uh, it's not going to invade into the woods like forget-me-nots and dame's rocket and become a problem in there. It's mostly out in fields and meadows and along roadsides and again in landscapes. So uh, yellow hawkweed or yellow devil's paintbrush. Here's a uh, thimble weed, and I'm not a weed at all. It's a wonderful native plant. Whenever you have the, the word weed in a common name, uh, people uh, worry, I think. Uh, milkweed's a, a great example, wonderful plants, but people think they're weeds because of the name. They're not. This is one of our several native anemones. Uh, we also have wood anemone and Canada anemone. Uh, this is very similar to Canada anemone. It's a little different flower, a uh, little bit more cupped. And, but like all anemones, five. These actually aren't botanically petals. These are sepals, but they look like flower petals. But in parts of five, uh, white, uh, very nice. Uh, you can see the seed head beginning to form, maybe already in the middle, and that's going to become larger and kind of thimble-shaped, hence the name, common name, thimbleweed. A nice uh, foliage, deeply cut, uh, stays nice all season. Uh, can grow in, any, in anywhere from full sun into part shade. Uh, very common up here in Door County. Thimbleweed.